No, I, so, I've not met your Uncle Phil. He's a good man, Uncle Phil. So he, uh, he was telling me, you know, he's just one of these guys that has so many lives pushed into one. He just does so many things, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, he says, he's a kind of a jack of all trades, you'd call him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good phrase. <laughs> yeah, he's a jack of all trades. So he was telling me, he said, the problem is you're not really appreciated for any single thing because you're so good at so many things. You understand mm -hmm. what I mean? I hear you. Yeah. So he says, he said to me one time, he says, Norm, he says, we were just walking through his, his town, you know, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Monkland, Maine, he lives in. Uh-huh. And uh, we were just walking through the town. He's an old fella, you know? Right, one of the old people. Yeah, he's 80. Yeah, 80, he's okay. 80 years young, he says. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he goes, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, Norm, you see that barn over there, he says to me. I look over, there's a barn. I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, I built that barn with my own hands all by myself. Oh. But he goes, do they call me, do they say there's Phil the barn builder? <laughs> no, sir, he says. I said, yeah, yeah. He goes, look over there, you see that uh, weather balloon? <laughs> <laughs> he, says, yeah. he, says, he says, I, he says, I, you don't know this about me, Norm. He says, I was one of the first men ever to fly in a weather balloon. Wow. He says, but do they say, hey, there goes Phil, the weather balloon pioneer? No. <laughs> he says, look over there, there there's a bakery uh -huh. that I started. You know, that mm -hmm. dirty bastard Bob has it now, but I'm the guy that started that bakery. Uh -huh. And I go, all right, all right, easy. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes, I started that bakery and I was the best baker, but does anybody go, oh, there goes Phil, the great baker. No, he says, but he says, let me tell you something, Norm. He says, you have sex with one goat. And... <laughs> Back in September, we lost a comedy icon, Norm MacDonald. He was someone who seemed to always be working to improve his craft and understanding of the intricacies of comedy, all the way up until the end. And this paid off. Norm is regarded by many comedians to be one of the funniest people of all time. But what made Norm stand out? What made him different from the big comedy names we see today? Well, I think it's actually kind of simple. Instead of focusing on an agenda, Norm focused on the comedy. Here's what people are talking about, you guys. President Trump gave his big speech at the U.N. General Assembly today, and at one point he threatened to totally destroy North Korea. Yeah, he said he has a, uh, said he has a good plan to do it, too. He's going to run for president of North Korea. So that's what he's, he's already got the hat made. During the speech, Trump threatened to, quote, totally destroy North Korea. Which I know, well, I think it can only mean one thing. Guys, it means he's going to run for president of North Korea. Trump also said during his address that if North Korea continues working on its nuclear program, the U.S. will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Oh, my God. Trump is going to run for president of North Korea. <laughs> when every comedian focuses on the same topic, the jokes become the same. With the rise of social media, social justice movements, and the increase in political divide, comedians had to worry more and more about offending people. So many started to play it safe, resorting to crude humor and weird noises, my, my, my. celebrities, or the biggest one, politics. Instead of making a crowd laugh, it turned into just trying to make the crowd applaud, and they began achieving this by spouting their party's political talking points. And there are only so many political talking points you can spout before it gets repetitive. We're going to help you out. Bro. Thank you. Have a good time. <laughs> Have a good time. It's a hurricane, not a pool party. You don't know. Have a good time. It's a flood area, not a water park. Have a good time. They're hurricane victims, and you sound like you're hosting a barbecue. Look at the biggest names in comedy and the comedians getting the most critical acclaim. Late night show hosts like Stephen Colbert. Maxine. Where's the joke? This is just propaganda. SNL, the biggest name of comedy shows. Hey, hey, did you know one in three clowns will have a clown abortion in their lifetime? You don't, because they don't tell you. They don't even know how to talk to other clowns about it. Because when they do talk about it, if you were a clown who wasn't the victim of something sad like clown sass, they think your clown abortion wasn't a righteous clown abortion. I mean, what the dick is that? <laughs> Whether or not you agree with the clown, where's the joke? They're just spouting one side's points on abortion. Netflix, a show like Masters of None, was actually funny when there were jokes, but 
then turned into Aziz and Zari just complaining about how Hollywood does not give Indians leading roles as he is in a leading role. Hannah Gadsby indicated that her special had a portion that was a lecture on politics and wasn't meant to be funny, which is funny because I could have sworn it was the whole thing, not just a portion. Even comedians who could be considered to support the other side, someone as highly regarded as Dave Chappelle. I was a little disappointed with his most recent special. I could already guess what the punchline to some of his jokes would be because I had heard them already. I'm almost certain that I saw the punchline to his Caitlyn Jenner joke as a YouTube comment back when Jenner won Woman of the Year. Compare all of that to Norm Macdonald. He would be funny, not by reciting p political agendas, but by actually telling funny jokes. While he did get his start doing the news update on SNL, which could be considered a little political, I think his best material is his stand-up and his show appearances. The deliberate choice of words masked by his delivery during his long story-like jokes demonstrated his mastery of the craft of comedy. He did not have to resort to politics to incite a reaction from the audience. And when he did discuss politics, there was more to the joke than just the political talking point. Take this legendary interview on The View. You like George Bush, don't you? I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent. You know, none of this. Hey, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's not a... Uh, a uh, lie or a crook murder or anything like that. So it'd be good to get the, see, I, I don't, I think we should get the homicide out of the White House and get like a, a, a fresh start because we don't want any more murderers. I no, think we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. Who are the murderers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Yeah, you know, we're not allowed, <laughs> no, you're not allowed no, to put out no, no, no accusations without That's a little too far. That's the way it does let's work. Just, let's just go on to the next question. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is not my week. What can I tell you? <laughs> Oh, it's not mine either, and I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> Be a good boy. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No. Listen, Norm, we don't need to talk about that. I don't want to get into this, and I don't want to hear it, and this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. Oh. Let's get on to it. Exactly. So get with it. There you go. This is a live show. Not Why? Norm, but you have been properly chastised by Barbara, oh. so I'm not going to ask the next question. I thought it was a matter of record. Shut no. up. Uh, Norm, Shut up. Look, okay. let me do this, OK? okay. <laughs> What's a matter of record? You will not be invited back if you don't shut up. Uh, All right, uh, now. <laughs> Let's talk football. All right, man, manslaughter. Let's talk football. <laughs> the entertainment from Norm here isn't just that he's saying talking points against Bill Clinton. The comedy comes from the way he is able to bait all these women and pull them out of their comfort zone. Compare that to SNL nowadays. Um, I could take COVID, here's some zinc, and ayahuasca. And some horse medicine. Well, why would a bird take horse medicine? I'm a human, and I took horse medicine. <laughs> and I'm speaking of things that uh, are horse-like. Uh, today's two sponsors are the letters S and D, as in I can S my own D. <laughs> Nothing clever being done here, just propagating a lie told by the media on one side about Joe Rogan. Norm did stand up on COVID recently, one of the most dividing political issues. But instead of taking the low-hanging fruit of making fun of anti-vaxxers or making fun of those people who wear masks while driving alone in the car, he avoided politics and was just original and funny. But you gotta be prepared, you know what I mean, in this year of life for any eventuality. And uh, that means being prepared. I'm not talking about buy a can of uh, cor corn. <laughs> That's only... Uh, cosmetic. I'm talking about having a whole room that's locked and filled with firearms <laughs> and you gotta be prepared, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, listen, I never thought I'd say this in my life, but I'd shoot my son in the fucking belly. <laughs> if he had a sneeze or any of that shit. I mean, he's a great kid, I love him, but he's never been on the TV, you know? One of my favorite stand-up jokes from Norm was his 11-minute long joke where he goes from the 24 hours news cycle to a woman going missing to how he would murder a woman. I doubt that many comedians today would dare tell a joke like that in the wake of the Gabby Petito case. You know, most of the audience wants to be funny and doesn't care about anything but that. They just want to escape. Yeah. But a tiny uh, a group of people uh, ruin it for everyone. And that's who you cater your performance to these days? I cater my performance to a tiny group of people that's sad. that hate me. Much like movies, video games, and music, comedy has fallen victim to politics. I'm not saying that there's no place for political comedy, 
but when it's the only thing you see, it really starts to lose its appeal. As someone who has an interest of getting into comedy, Norm was someone I looked up to as a role model. If you haven't seen his material, you're missing out. There's a great channel called I'm Not Norm that has a lot of great clips. I really don't think comedy should be yet another thing that divides us, and I think Norm was a great example of a genuinely funny person that can make anyone laugh. Comedy has suffered a loss with his passing, and I hope that the space he filled in comedy will not be lost with him. When I was young, there was a fella uh, by went by the name of uh, Jacques de Gautier. <laughs> and he was from uh, Tamiskaming, Quebec. And Jacques de Gautier, he was a fella that really thought. And he was smart, you know. He was our hope, I guess. And he, uh, he was, uh, while I was scrabbling to get out of high school, Jacques Zagatino had already... I think he just changed his last name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a man grows. He, he uh... <laughs> This is the point. Yeah. Jacques de Gatineau, he went to McGill University and he got three degrees, by golly. And he went to, to the, over across the pond to the fellers with Cambridge and he even stood up to them. Mm -hmm. And we thought, boy, he's going to be the next. We had uh, Jean Marchand, Gérald Tertier, uh, Pierre Trudeau, the three wise men of Quebec. By God, Jacques de Gatineau was going to be the next. You give me the next gun. Yeah. But he vanished. And uh, I met him, uh, I started to do stand-up and, and travel from here to there and, and to here again. <laughs> and uh, one, uh, one time I was in uh, Niagara Falls, and uh, by uh, gosh, I went over to the uh, uh, Sea World there. You know how they have the Sea World? <laughs> you know, with the different fish. <laughs> You know. The I didn't know that, but okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. Beluga. The Sea World. I've sure. been there many a time. Okay, so I was checking out the beluga whales and stuff, and I look over, and who do you think I see? I hope it's that guy. No, it was uh, <laughs> uh, it was just an attendant, but uh, <laughs> but he showed me to the place I wanted to see, which is where they feed the the little baby dolphins, because I love dolphins, you know. And uh, who do I see there? But Jacques de Gatineau. <laughs> And here he is, he's feeding the baby dolphins. And I go up to him and I go, Jacques de Gatineau, I, I feel shame for you. You were our hope. You were to go to Canada, uh, uh, Canada's nation's capital of uh, Ottawa. <laughs> and you, you were to be a great man, Jacques de Gatineau. And we were all, uh, you know, we pinned our, all of, all of Tamistikamin, Quebec, pinned our hopes on you. Now, that's a, that's a hell of a burden for a man to have a town's hope pinned on them, isn't it, Conan? It is a lot, big burden. So he was feeding these baby uh, dolphins, you know, and I said, I'm ashamed of you, Jacques de Gatineau. You could have done so many great things. And he said, well, he said, I think I'm serving a youthful porpoise. Now, I believe that... Uh, <laughs> was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. You don't encourage that. Oh. It's like, that was a 40-minute story. It's like somebody... Youthful po 